Morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 23rd of August, 2017. Welcome along to Television Centre here in Bracknell to this morning's United Kingdom talk. How are you this morning? Uh, sorry I didn't get to you last night. I, I got stuck doing some paperwork. What happened, and I haven't finished doing it yet, to be honest, I'm not very good with the paperwork. Oh, that's a bit open, isn't it? So nice bright colours for you this morning, and we'll stop that blooming thing focusing as well. I keep forgetting to do that. Hang on a minute. Autofocus off. Lovely. Lovely. Yes, nice bright colours for you this morning. We like bright colours. No magnolia. No magnolia. Yeah, I was doing some uh, uh, paperwork last night. My accountant's my accountant is uh, requesting all sorts of information now because it's my he, he he does my accounts once a year and and keeps the tax bill down as far as he possibly can. Although next year it's looking quite large. My tax bill is looking quite large next year. However, because I changed cars last year, apparently that's that's going to um. Uh, knock it down a bit, but I'm looking at quite a high tax bill next year. Uh, being self-employed, you see, we, we don't get taxed every week. Now, when I say it's a high tax bill, it is a lot to pay all in one go. But of course, if I was doing it across the year, like most people on pay as you earn, it wouldn't look as much as that. In fact, you probably pay more than me. I can claim for all sorts of things, computers, cars, wires, microphones, clothes for work and all that. Stuff. I can claim that back off the tax thing, you see, being self-employed, which uh, if you're PAYE, uh, you can't. But the difference is I have to pay it all in. Well, I have to pay it in two goes, one in January and one at the end of July. And I've just paid the July one. Uh, a few weeks ago. I always pay on time. We can't be paying £100 fines, dear. I mean, the amount of idiots that leave it, and they leave it, and they leave it, and they leave it, and the moment it goes over, that 31st of July, 1st of August, bang, you get, well, it used to be a £100 fine. Anyway, I have never, ever had a tax fine for being late or not putting the papers in. I mean, stupid. I can't believe how stupid people can be. Why would you want to pay someone a hundred pounds, you know, it, uh, just just because you couldn't be bothered to get your finger out and get it sorted? That's not the only only um uh, fee. That that's the that's that's the first fee, I think. So you know, if it goes over that one hundred pound fine, I think there are other fees that that continue. Then, if you still don't do it within. Uh, uh, another given period of time, there's another fine. I think they then start charging interest and all sorts of things like that. Pay it on time. Madness. And that's with all fines, of course. Especially those ones that we hate so much. Oh, yes, the car parking fines. <clears throat> I was very, very surprised yesterday to see the little car park that is next to Slimmer's World run by Wokingham Borough Council. I've got a big sign outside there now saying, this car park is now charging 24 hours, seven days, 365 days a year, including weekends and bank holidays. They're desperate for the money. And it's always the motorist that suffers, isn't it? Why is that? They hate, they hate us, mummy. They hate us. Uh, so that's what I was doing last night, accounts. Had my hair cut yesterday, as you can see, every two weeks, thank you. Wendy had the audacity to mention to me the other day, your hair needs cutting. I know. Only every two weeks, Wendy. We can only afford to have it cut every two weeks. £10 it costs me. £12, including the tip. Look at that. 20%. I think that's very fair. 20% tip, dear. Hope she tells the tax people how many tips she's getting. I'm sure I'm not the only one to give her 20% 20 20 tip. So had me hair cut. And I was talking, oh, she's lovely. She, she is so nice, this lady. Lady from Nepal. N-E-P, what is it? Nepal. N-E-P-A-L. Anyway, that's where she's from. And she's uh, married and she lives here. And they've just come back off holiday, her and her husband. And uh, she's got, I think, two children. Very little children. I think like three or four years old, something like that. And they've just been to, uh, would you believe, Scotland for a holiday. And I say, would you believe, because this is something I want to do soon. I want to go to the Highlands. I love the Highlands. I have been once before to the Highlands and it is the most beautiful, stunning place. I want to see Loch's, uh, Loch Lomond, maybe Loch Ness. You know, and there's no monster down there, dear. Oh, God. Why do people think there is a monster down Loch Ness? Don't you think they would have, like, BBC would have been there by now and got some video evidence of it? Huh? 
<clears throat> There's no Loch Ness, but I'd like to see locks and walking in the Highlands. Um, and what it is, I've got to... And she, she's been. You see, she's just come back from there. And you may remember a couple of weeks ago, I was saying to you, you know, she told me it took only six hours to drive from Wokingham, near, which is near me, Bracknell, from Wokingham to Glasgow. And I didn't believe that. I didn't believe that. And I looked it up on the thing, and sure enough, it did say six hours. So I said, how long did it actually take you to get to Glasgow? And she said, well, uh, just under seven hours. You know, it was a little bit about... about in the whole journey, it was about an hour's worth of traffic. So it took her seven hours to drive there. But then it's another five hours to get into the Highlands. So if you do the whole thing, that would be a long drive. I reckon you could, if you split it up in two, maybe you did a seven and a five, which is exactly what she did. And she was telling me she stayed at the Travel Lodge Hotel, but it was expensive because they had left it so late. Now you often find, I think, with Travel Lodge, Premier Inn, uh, and some of those websites, you know, that compare lots of different hotels. You get in a couple of months before you want to go, two or three months before you want to go, and you get really good deals, like maybe 30, 40 pounds a room, something like that. Leave it till the week before, you're going to be paying 100 pounds a week. OK, so always a good tip there to book ahead. Um, and then, uh, and, and, you know, I carried on the conversation while we were stopping, but unfortunately, at this point, <laughs> At this point, the hair cutting stopped and out came the photos. Oh, God, here we go, dear. Oh, no. Flick, flick on the phone, flick, 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 flick. And I thought, oh, you know, it's getting close now to my Slimming World visit. <laughs> and there's more and more photos. Well, lovely for you, lovely for you to show this. Oh, and here's the. Yeah, they look really nice. Now, yes, and this one. <laughs> But she, honestly, that the, that lady is so inoffensive and she's kind and she's gentle and she's very, very soft spoken. A little bit like myself, to be honest, a little bit soft spoken. So I saw all the photos and sure enough, it was exactly as I expected. The locks and the um, uh, the greenery and the trees. Oh, so beautiful. And she said, we were very lucky. We had wonderful weather we, we, while we were there. And I said, yeah, but it doesn't even matter, does it, the weather? When you're out somewhere, in fact, a little bit of rain while you're walking around um, Heathland and things like that, the smell that you get. Oh, oh, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice smell when you cut the grass, which I did yesterday. Don't it look nice when you've cut the grass in the garden? When, when you've cut that grass, and the smell of the cut grass is lovely. Heathland smells even better. Just, just the smell of the earth and the, and the grass and all that. <clears throat> Um, so lovely of her to show us uh, the pictures. Um, I think, though, probably, and she hired, they hired a car while they were up there. Oh, that's that point. What did she mean then? She said she drove, it took them five hours. Oh, maybe they hired a car from here. Yeah, they must have hired the car from here and take the car up. What I would do, I've got a load of Avios points, you know, British Airways. Um, uh, I, I don't think they're, particular to British Airways, are they, Avios points? Lots of different people have them. Um, uh, but I've got uh, 20,000 Avios points, and I should be able to get my return flights on those. And the reason I'm looking is because I've had an, an email from British Airways saying I've got two months to use them, otherwise they run out. They're, they're time limited. What you have to do is do something with them. So I might not use 20,000, but as I've done something with them, then the clock starts again. And I think you get about three years to spend them or something like that. Do you like my cup? Look, my Disneyland Paris cup. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Don't go to Euro Disney. It's blooming expensive. It really is. And there's nowhere to eat other, way, other, other than in the Disney village. Don't go to Euro Disney. It's too, too expensive. Go to the Florida one. You'll find it probably the same price, really, honestly. Um... So I'm thinking I could use those Avios points, get a flight up there and then hire a small car up there. And I wouldn't want anything flat, you know, cheapest car I could possibly find. That's what I'd hire. Hire that up there and um, just drive around. That's the accommodation. I'm getting a little bit stuck on accommodation. I had a little quick check yesterday and I found a couple of ideas that I've got in my head. But I, I do find it very complicated to book holidays. Usually... 
I'll go into Thomas Cook. Now, the reason I'm not going into Thomas Cook this time is because they can't do it with the Avios points, you see? So I've got to do that myself. Although I could, actually, I could go in and maybe book the cottage through, but either a cottage or a caravan. I don't want to stay in a hotel. I, I generally don't like staying in hotels. Everyone, loads of rooms and people all over the place, you know. I want to be quiet. And, um, yeah, I might do that end of October if I can sort of pull it all together. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I, I, I really don't. Not good at booking holidays and things online. So that was my haircut yesterday. It's, I think it's looking quite nice, don't you? She does a good job. Does a good job. Um, so then, let me have a look. Let me have. Oh, that's what I meant to change that picture today. Never mind. I haven't done it, have I? Never mind. I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, then I went to Slimming World with the lovely Linda. Wokingham Slimmers World. Linda, uh, Slimmer's World Wokingham with Linda. That's the title. There is a Facebook group. We all put stuff on there, you know. I'm going to do a little Slimming World video soon of me doing some sort of Slimming World chips or something. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, dear. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, that's better. So, um, so we're in there and I'm, I'm queuing up to go on the scows and uh, talking to the ladies. Some have had a good week. Some have had a bad week. And one lady, she said, oh, she said, I'm really not looking for the scales this week. I said, well, don't worry about it. If it goes up a bit, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it really does. And if it just goes up a little bit now and again, or stays the same. Now, the lady behind me, she's from Canada. And she was saying, I hope there's going to be some movement this week. She said, but I don't think there will be because I've been a bit naughty again this week. I said, well, how's it been? She said, well, I've stayed the same for the last four weeks. And, it's, and, and being part of the group, it's all about encouraging each other, you see. And I said to her, well, I said, but that's OK. It hasn't gone up, has it? Hasn't gone up. That's an achievement in itself, isn't it? She said, oh, I'd like it to go down a bit. Well, maybe next week or maybe this week. Wait till, you, wait till you've done those guys. So she done her scout. She was in front. Uh, uh, she was behind me. And uh, she has, unfortunately, once again, not, no, not unfortunately. She has, fortunately, stayed the same again. So it hasn't gone up. That is an achievement. Hasn't gone up. Um, I stepped on the scales. Are you ready, boys and girls? Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This week I have gained, lost, gained, lost, gained, lost, lost 1.5 pounds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. 1.5 pounds down again. And people are saying, you can really see it in your face, Chris, now. And you can, actually. It's funny, isn't it? And I remember my uh, uh, our parish priest, Father Symes, um, when I was a child. He he was the the pa wonderful man, Father Symes, our parish priest at Saint Joseph's in Bracknell. Um, he died a number of years ago, a long time ago. Now he died actually, um, but he was a wonderful, totally dedicated priest to the to the church. And every day he'd be running up and down Roehampton. Um, Lane or Danebury Avenue, visiting houses. He used to walk around Richmond Park every day. He was very, very fit. Father Symes. Oh, wonderful man. And I remember him standing on the altar once. And um, he said uh, I'm tr he was trying to lose a little bit of weight. And the trouble is, when you're losing weight, the first place that it goes is your face. You know, so I can sit there looking very, very thin now. I've still got a bit of a tummy. I've still got this little little thing around my waist. But there's only one thing around my waist now. There were three, you know, a big one and two smaller ones. So uh, I'm very pleased to have lost one and a half pounds again in a week. Uh, I'm now weighing 12 stone, eight pounds. Now, next week, if I'm if I can lose one and a half next week, then I will be be down to my Slimmer's World 10. That means you've lost 10% of your body weight, which in my case would be uh, about one stone seven or something like that. So I'm hoping to get to that next week. There's a, there's a little challenge for me to get to my Slimmer's World 10 next week. Although, looking at the way my weight goes, now and again it goes up a little bit. Not massive. It, for, for some reason, now and again it goes down, 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 up. Down, 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 down. I don't know why that is. That's just how it is. And I've dropped on the last five weeks. So I'm expecting a small increase next week. This is just how it works for some reason. I don't know why that is. So that was me. 
Um, and that was, of course, with an afternoon tea last week. You remember I went out to the uh, Royal Albert Hall with my mate last week and we had an afternoon tea at a hotel, which consisted of four... Sa when I say four sandwiches, I don't mean whole sandwiches. Afternoon tea, you get little fingers, which were about so wide, you know, I suppose about... About an, about an inch and a bit wide. So you get four of those. <clears throat> two scones with jam and cr clotted cream. Uh, and about six other little cakes. And an ice cream. And I had that all Tuesday. But, you see, the thing is, I only had that once. So that's one meal out of... Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty. One meal out of 21 meals that I didn't stick to the plan. So that can work. Well, it works for me. So really, you know, every week I should be going out once a week and just having a little bit of a, a thing like that. I don't think I'd go as far as a pizza, perhaps. No, but um, I could go out maybe for Toby Carvery. Oh. Roast potatoes. Roast potatoes. Toby Carvery. Yes. I mean, I could go out to Toby Carvery. Of course, I don't eat so much anymore anyway, so I very much doubt that I'd be able to pile on the potatoes that I used to. <laughs> and apparently, um, Linda at Slimming World Wokingham with Linda was saying that if you go into Toby Carvery, a lot of this stuff, of course, is cooked in butter and oil. You can actually ask for your vegetables plain. I mean, it'd take another couple of minutes. They probably got them out of the back already cooked and they just had a butter at the, at the last moment. I don't know. But you can actually ask for your vegetables and stuff with no butter on. My favourite thing in Toby Carvery, apart from those roast potatoes, da -da -da -da, is, uh, is, is the onions. They, they have a big thing of onions, which is done in some sort of um, uh, gravy, which is really nice. Uh, so that was my Slimmer's World last week. Let's just say hello to some people who are with us this morning. Good morning to Joey. Hello, Joey. I haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well, sir. Good morning, Joey. Uh, Gavin Matthews is there. Good morning, Gavin. Hope you're well. Lovely Diane. Always there with that foul. Ray Reynolds, thanks for Monday night karaoke. Yeah, I'll come on to that in a minute, Ray. Good morning, Ray. Hope you're well. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, is that all? Is that the only messages? Thanks you? for Monday night oh, karaoke. Oh, yeah, God. I'll come on to that in a minute, uh, Ray. Shut, shut up. Shut up. Did you hear that? I was speaking to myself then. Not a very pleasurable experience. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I've, 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 some, something must have got stuck then. Adam's there. Good morning to lovely Adam. Adam sent in a couple of birthdays this morning by text message. Now, when we get to the birthdays, at the end of the show, if I don't read those out, tell me. Because they're on... Something else. Do you see what I mean? They're on a phone next to me. So I must remember to do that. All right. Uh, good morning to uh, lovely Christina. Good morning, Christina. Jane Howard. Good morning, Jane. Uh, Barbara Leeds. Good morning, Barbie. Barbie, did you send me, Barbie, another friend request? Because I got another one from you and I keep getting this with people and they're fake. So if you put a little message on within the... Um, uh, within the show, where, where you put just put that good morning message. Um, let me know and I'll accept it. If not, I'll ignore it. Okay, darling. Good morning to Scotty Ogilvy. Good morning from me and my fiance Jenna. Jenna in New Zealand. Good morning, Scotty. Uh, it's lovely. They've moved into their own place. I, I keep an eye on you, Scotty. Don't worry about that. But please, have you still got that ghastly beard? Get rid of that beard. God's sake, I can't stand it. My my niece's husband has got one at the moment, and it's down here. What's all that about, lads? Come on. Clean shaven, just like your Uncle Chris. There we are. Morning, Peter. Got to say hello to Kimberly this morning. Good morning, Kimberly. That's a lovely name, isn't it? Good morning, Kimberly. You have, you have a wonderful name, and I'm sure you're a nice person as well. A little bit like myself, yes. Morning, Merlin, the lovely Merlin, who does lots of uh, radio stuff. Hello, Merlin. Hope you're well, sir. Are you with anyone yet, Merlin? I know you you were seeking a partner a while back, weren't you? A long, uh, actually, a long time ago now. Hope you're with someone, Merlin. Uh, some people need, you know, some people need someone, I think. I think some people need someone. My best mate needs someone in his life. Indeed, he's been with the same bloke now for 10 years. 
<laughs> I think some people need someone, a partner to, to, to function properly. You know, and, and my mate said to said to someone the other day, "Oh, that's Chris. Don't worry. You know, he doesn't really need anyone in his life." You know, and I think it, there's there's a certain truth to that. <clears throat> I was talking to, um, I don't think I'm going to name, no, I won't name them. I was talking to someone uh, uh, who comes in to, now I've got to tell you about identifying the person, who comes into one of the places that I work and he's got certain hobbies, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. He's He's got a certain hobby and he was telling me, yeah, he split up with his wife years ago. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Was that a little bit of a... He said, no, you're joking, isn't you? He said, I couldn't do my hobby while I was with her. He said, now I can go out and do it every night. <laughs> and, you know, there is a certain certain truth to that, I think. And I think um, uh, myself, actually, you know, sometimes I've, over the years, oh, it'd be quite nice to have someone in my life and that, uh, which I suppose it would be. But do I actually need someone in my life? Maybe not. I, th I don't think everyone needs that. Some people do, some people don't. You know, I don't know if Merlin. I think. Well, I think Merlin. Um, I think at one point you did. Whether you still or not, I don't know. Or whether you're with, with anyone, you must let me know. Let me know. Good morning to Colin. Morning, Colin. Uh, when are oh, there's Wendy this morning? Wendy's with us this morning. I thought you might be at uh, at church. Good morning, Wendy. Uh, thank you, Barbie. <clears throat> Barbie, I'm assuming that you didn't send me that friend request, so I will ignore it unless you put a little note there. Maybe she sent me a private message now. Let's have a look. Look on the other thing. No. You see, there seems to be a lot of that going on at the moment. Um, people, including myself, getting friend requests from people that they are already friends with. And often they are fakes, dear. Fakes. I hope, I hope I'm not a fake. I'm not a fake. I'm really here. Honestly, looking very bright this morning. Um, Christina says, way to go on the weight loss. You might even get a sticker if you lose 10%. Oh, you do. You get stickers. Little shiny stickers to put on the front of your book and certificates. I've already got two ears somewhere. One minute. <laughs> this, this room is getting more and more messy. I'm telling you. Oh, God. Here's, here's, oh, here's a certificate. There's one of them. That, that that was my half a stone certificate. Has it got a date on it? Which I got on the twentieth of um twentieth of June, you see. And I've got a one stone one somewhere. I don't know where they all are. They're all over the place. <laughs> I wonder if people actually put these in little frames and on the wall. I chucked away a load of frames on Monday actually when a bin man came. Oh, it was all very exciting Monday. I got a new bin. My blue wheelie bin, which is the recycled one, developed a big crack in the bottom, which probably means when the bin men come, they slammed it down onto the floor and broke it. So I rung up the council. A brand new shiny blue bin. How exciting is that? Wonderful. Something for nothing. No doubt my council tax will go up after that one. There's a phone line open if you want to call in at any point. There you go. There's the number. 020 Eight one double four three four double seven oh two oh eight one double four three four double seven. Um and as always, those of you who have shared today's show to your Facebook walls, thank you very much for I think someone was sharing it to their Twitter as well the other day. So thank you very, very much for sharing my uh, little show to your walls, okay? Uh good. So that was the slim as well. I came back home <clears throat> and <clears throat> I wrapped up a big box. Now, you remember la, about two or three shows ago now, I showed you my latest gadget, which is a tower low fat air thing. Oh, what's it called now? Just a minute. Amazon. I can't remember what it was called now. Amazon. Oh, where's my, um, your, your orders, your orders. One moment, please. Trying to connect you, call it. There it is. There's that wheelie bin. There's a wheelie, not wheelie bin. Uh, timer. Oh, it's not on. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. My Tower Health Oil Free Halogen Air Fryer. Now, you remember I bought this and I did some chips in it. And I said to you, the top chips get done quicker than the bottom chips. And um, I thought, OK, you know, that's just how it is. Well, the other day I did some more chips in there, top and bottom again, because it, it, it's very small. 
it looks massive. But when you put putting chips in it, it doesn't look that big. And I'd done my Slimmer's World chips. And the top ones, they were okay. But the bottom ones weren't done at all. And, you know, so I had the ones in the top bit. And then I ate those and my dinner. I thought I'd go back for the bottom ones. And they still weren't done. And in fact, when I took out... And it's difficult getting them out of a thing as well. Because you've got to put your hand in this glass oven type thing. It sits on, on the... It's like, uh, how can I explain it? I haven't got a picture of it. it. It's like a big glass bowl, right? And in the top bit is like the halogen light things. And you lift the handle and then you, you take your stuff back out again. Now, inside are kind of two um, shelves, which are all made of metal. It, it's a bit flimsy. It just seems a bit flimsy to me, the way it was. I was very pleased with it when I first got it. It looked fantastic. Um, so you've got to get your hand in to remove the first, the top of it. Now, I, I, I've, I haven't got a, an oven glove would do it, probably, I suppose, when you think about it. An oven glove would be perfect. But I haven't got an oven glove. So I've kind of got this tea towel, which is wrapped over my hand like that. And I'm trying to lift it out like that. And got the, the top one's not too bad to get out. The bottom one is much harder. OK, because your whole hand is going on. And remember, the inside of that, before you took the top off, was about 200 degrees centigrade, which means the glass is very, very hot. Now, I did manage to get it out without hurting myself, but you've got to be really careful. And I could see myself in the future at some point, you know, oh, oh, I just do this quickly and then burn in your hand on the side of this, this glass thing. And I got out the bottom ones uh, after... A good hour in there, at about 240, according to the temperature gauge uh, thing on the top there. And not only were they not done very well, they had actually stuck. Because they hadn't cooked, they had stuck to the bottom of this blooming basket, uh, this, this, this metal shelf thing. And I thought, oh, gosh, so I've scraped them off under a plate and I ate them. Well, it was just like having mashed potato. <laughs> so... I then went on onto the Amazon review things and there were a couple of people, there were quite a few people actually, who hadn't had a good experience. One woman said she was she was cooking something and all of a sudden the thing just shattered. Other people were on there saying it worked for a few months and then just didn't work after that. And I thought, no. So I, 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 I've i got to give Amazon its full due. Excellent, excellent service. I, I rarely send things back through the post. Um... But I, uh, uh, I wrapped it up. And, of course, you can't get the thing back in the box, can you? Oh, that's just impossible. How do they get these things in boxes and send them out? I do not know. <laughs> so I'm trying to put this thing... But I've, I've put the whole thing through the dishwasher, not the top bit with the element, but, but all the other bits. I put it all through the dishwasher. It looked brand new. Um, so I've, I've kind of tried to put it in the box and put the things in. Put the, of course, the lid won't do up, will it? Lid, I couldn't get the lid back on on the box. Fortunately, because of the way Amazon do things, that box comes in a bigger box, right? So you got that in there, kind of <laughs> push the lid down as far as it will go and then tape it up. And then, well, it was all taped up, all taped up. And then, of course, I found something that I'd left out. Oh, gold. Which was this little spray thing that they give with you as well that you can fill up with oil if you want. I don't use it. I use Fry Light. Fry Light or Spray Light, whatever it's called, you know, that you get from the supermarket. <clears throat> so I've opened the box again, put this thing in and done it up. I thought, lovely. Um, so I've gone on to the Amazon thing, told them the thing. Immediately, they said, I mean, as in, as in immediately, yeah, within five minutes, they send me a uh, return label which I print off, and I'm reading the instructions, and cut around this, and then put this one inside the parcel. I thought, oh, no, I forgot to undo it again. I had to undo it again. Twice I had to undo the parcel to put in this piece of paper with some sort of code on it. So I've done that, and then on the Amazon website, it says, if you, um, uh, if you accept a gift card, an Amazon gift card, to the value of the item, OK, uh, that's issued immediately. Right. Or you can have it put back into your bank account. 
within mm. seven to ten working days. I thought, well, I mean, I, I'm always buying stuff on Amazon. At least one item a week. At least one item a week I buy from Amazon. That's true. OK, so I thought I might as well have the gift card. So that's fine. <clears throat> So it's all wrapped out now. My mate Ronnie came round and bought me a gift yesterday. Can you see the new orchid? Isn't that lovely? Look at that. New orchids. He's actually bought me four orchids. That's the only one that's in flower from some woman who was selling them. I think he bought four for 10 quid. And she looked, she does orchids and was telling him, you know, when a lot of people think when the flowers died, it's dead. Well, it's not. <clears throat> it's not dead. And when you water it, you have to water that bit at the top. Never get the water on the leaves because it rots them through. So you, what, you, what you're supposed to do is give that a good water, then put it on the draining board, right? And let it completely drain away and then put it back in position wherever it's going. So that's my, my new beautiful white orchid. Which like a, look, at, isn't that lovely, eh? What a shame they don't smell, though, and the orchids don't smell. And they last for ages. I tell you what, I'll leave that there. I will leave that there and we'll see how long that lasts. OK, so here we are. 23rd of August. We'll see how long that lasts before the flowers start dropping off. Usually they go for months. They're such good value orchids. You go down to those places and you get cut flowers and things like that. They don't last long at all, do they? Cut flowers, you know, two weeks maximum and they're in the bin again. Orchids... Um, even if you go and get one like from uh, Waitrose or Sainsbury's, wherever like that, you will get two, it uh, costs you about 10 quid, you'll get two, two and a half months with that flare on. Better value, much better value than buying cut flowers. Absolutely. So, on the Amazon thing again, um, I printed off that thing. And Ronnie came round, giving me presents, and he took me to... Uh, well, you dropped them off, you see. There's, there's no... You don't have to send stuff back. You don't have to pay for the postage. No, they print a label off, and you take it to uh, a, a given place, uh, as is a little Asian supermarket, which is near a pub, the Jolly Farm, around the corner there, called Star Supermarket. So you go in there with your big box. He, he, he goes beep, beep, with his scanner thing. He gives you a receipt. You're out the door, and that's it. How fantastic is that? And literally, as we're in the car coming back from the Star Supermarket to my house, within two minutes of me leaving the little Asian supermarket, right, my phone bleeped and it was a message from Amazon telling me that my account had now got a gift card on it to the value of the, of the device. It was about £34 altogether, I think. Isn't that fantastic? Really good service. And I said to my mate, I said, well, why have they done it? They haven't even got the item back yet. He said, yeah, but you've delivered that. They know it's waiting there. I said, well, what if something's missing? I said, well, they probably got, you know, methods to deal with that sort of thing, haven't they? Really? I, I suppose they have anyway. So that's uh, just fantastic service from Amazon. And as I say, I rarely um, send anything back to Amazon. But uh, in this case, that one was a little bit... Uh, a little bit worn out, really. Um, good. And uh, that's my Amazon story. So very pleased. So I wouldn't bother with one of those tower fryers oven things. They just didn't do it for me. Let's go back to some of your messages then. Uh, good morning to the lovely uh, John Springate. Good morning, John. Hope all is well. Are you still wearing your new red sparkly uh, coat? I think that's wonderful. That is your red sparkly coat. Morning, sir. Merlin has got himself a partner, three kittens and a French bulldog. Oh, well, you'll never be lonely, will you? <laughs> oh, Merlin. Christ, you've got so many items to cuddle you there. So you can have a row with one. You've still got the other ones to cuddle up to. Excellent news. Excellent. Excellent. Morning to Jane, uh, who says, uh, lovely looking orchid. Yes, it's got um, one, two, there's five flowers on there at the moment. It really is beautiful. Jane's got pink and white orchids for years. Totally not fake orchids. Oh, no, you can't have fake flowers, Jane. No fake flowers, please. I even see outside some people's houses, they've got a window box. And you look more closely and they're plastic. How awful is that? Don't have them if you don't want them. Plastic flowers and plus, and they had in the garden centre, funnily enough, they actually had um, fake 
hanging baskets uh, I saw in the summer. They're just dreadful, dreadful. I, I, I can't lie to you, from a distance, I thought they were real. And then you get closer to them, plastic hanging baskets with um, geraniums and busy lizzies and ivy. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Real ones only, please. Good morning, Julian in Spain. Morning, Julian. How are you today? You're okay? Good. Uh, yesterday, I must say, I had my usual afternoon sleep. I put the air conditioning on in my bedroom. It was ever so hot yesterday afternoon, but no sunshine. It was all cloud, all cloud and miserable, like some of the people on here, I'll tell you. Talking to people on here, you may have seen yesterday at the top of my Facebook um, uh, 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 thing last night, I did put a little video up of of some bloke advertising his air conditioning. And it was obviously the owner of the company. And it was it just no personality whatsoever. <laughs> oh, hello, my name's Fred, and I want to show you a brand new air conditioning. And then you could get a little photo. I mean, technically it all worked, but no personality of a damp lettuce leaf. It really was. There was nothing there. And you get that often. You look on YouTube at, at, at bosses of large companies advertising their own product. It's a little bit like, oh, you know that bloke Bernard Matthews? He was a bit NP, weren't he? Do you know what NP means? NP, no personality. Remember that. When you're out with your friends and you start talking to someone and it's like, oh, oh, yeah. I, mean, I know so many people like that, dear. NP, no personality, dear. Why don't they pay someone to do it? I could do it for you. Hello. Welcome to Chris Reardon's Air Conditioning. I want to show you today this wonderful, wonderful new product that we've got that will keep you cool through those summer months. When you invite people back to your bedroom at the height of summer, the last thing you want is to leave sticky, sweaty messes on the bed. So you need one of our air conditioning units. And bang, picture of air conditioning unit comes up. And then look how powerful it is. You turn it on, right? You stand in front of it, but what the camera can't see is a, is a big fan behind it. Whoa, like that. That's how you advertise stuff. Oh, hello. My name's Fred Blonks. I want to show you my air conditioning. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. These people have got loads and loads of money. So, but they won't spend it on a blooming actor. Oh, dear, dear me. Don't forget, gang, you can call in if you want to now. 0208 144. Oh, did someone try and call in? Actually, let me turn that off. I realise what's... Yes. Uh, just a moment, darlings. I've, I've got... That was a stupid mistake. Last night, I downloaded Skype onto my phone. And it's different. And it's it's just hideous. I I, I hate it. The new Skype on the phone. OK, someone just tried to call in. Do you want to try and call in again? Because it came up on the phone and I can't take it on the phone, unfortunately, because uh, that's not plugged into the system. Give it another go and uh, call in on there. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've lost, I lost, I lost the thread. I've lost the thread. Never mind. Uh, John says it's worry you're talking about flowers. Percy Thrower comes to mind. Well, he's dead. Do you remember Percy Fleur on Blue Peter? He was a great friend. And now on Blue Peter is a great friend to the Blue Peter. And the Blue Peter garden is Percy Thrower. And he used to come out and dig up plants and plant bulbs and things like that. Eh? Yeah. Oh, do you remember that time at, the, at Blue Peter, <clears throat> funnily enough, when, when, uh, <laughs> I never forget that. John Noakes wasn't in it anymore. I think it was, who was the tall lanky bloke in Blue Peter? 1980, something like that. I don't remember. Delala, try again, my darling. I'm so sorry. I should be able to... It should come up on the screen now if you want to try again. All right. Um, and they came on and told you, they said, we'd like to start today's programme with some very sad news. Bad people broke into the Blue Peter Garden last night and smashed everything. And then the camera went outside and everything had been kicked to pieces. And they'd even put bleach in the fish pond and killed all the ble all, all the fish. Terrible. This was big news on Blue Peter in the 1980s. Nowadays, they're throwing bags of acid at each other, the kids, aren't they? 
God's sake, it's so dangerous out there. Really, really very dangerous. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ben Parker, incidentally, who has helped manage to sort out... We had a bit of a sound issue um, at the last few karaoke's that you may have noticed, boys and girls. Um, basically, the... Oh, there we go. There's the call come up there. That's better. That'll work now. Good morning, Dalila. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello, how are you? Are you from the United States. Well, how wonderful. What part of the States are you in? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on the East Coast. Pennsylvania 65000. I love it. Well, good morning to you. What would you like to talk about? Oh, I just wanted to call you to let you know that I thoroughly enjoy your show. Ah, uh, it's just You're a, fantastic. It's just a little bit of fun in the morning. You must be up very early. What is it there? About 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? Uh, here it's almost 6. Oh, so I'm a breakfast show over there. Yes, I enjoy you with my morning coffee. Do you have a, a typical Denny's American breakfast at all? Or what, what do you have for breakfast? No, right now I'm just drinking coffee. Maybe a little later I'll drink, uh, have some toast or a bagel, something like that, something light. Do you, do you ever go to Denny's and have one of those in there? I mean, they have so much for breakfast in Denny's, don't they? Stacks and stacks of pancakes and things like that. Uh, uh, Denny's is not one that I would choose. Mm. I, I might go to IHOP for breakfast. Is, isn't that, <laughs> is that just all pancakes in IHOP, isn't it? No, IHOP has everything. You can get oh. breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm I'm a big fan of Denny's. I love it in there. But honestly, I mean, the amount of food that you get in there. The last time I was there um, was about uh, coming on three years ago now. I uh, went to Florida, and uh, I took my nephew with me, and we went, went into Denny's. I knew what to expect because I'd been before. And then I think he ordered pancakes and thinking he'd get two. And there's this big stack of eight pancakes. And I said, well, that's just a start. <laughs> I love it. I, I love work, Chris. I love Florida. I think I need a little place in Florida, Dave. Can you, can you purchase me one there? Wow. Florida is quite expensive. You've got to have a lot of money to live there in Florida. Oh, have you? Oh, I, know, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, our, yes. our housing... People go to retire. Oh, OK. You're nowhere near retirement and age, I can tell from that photo, my dear. You must be about 23 no, years old. 23, 24. <laughs> I know I the words to say. <laughs> Times two. <laughs> Do you ever get over to the UK at all? I haven't been there. Oh, I'd you've like never been? i one day, but I haven't been there before. Where's the sort of places that you like to go on holiday? Wow. Uh, my kids and I like to go to the beach. And there's, there's so one... We... I'm sorry, go ahead. There, there's one near you, is there? Well, uh, maybe about two hours drive. Yes, we're, we're on the coast, but uh, to go to the beach, maybe about two hours. Oh, that's not too In bad. In any direction, we can find a beach. How, how many of you is there? Have you got a family there? Well... Uh, I have two children. Yes. Who are my they? My son is 14 and my daughter is 12. Okay. Do they know what they want to do yet and, for jobs? Uh, do they know? What they want to do for jobs? Have they got any idea what they want to do yet? I encourage my kids to, to do their own thing, to, to really concentrate on being self-employed rather than looking for Good. a position here in Good. the United States. Good. Do they do they know I what that for them. do they know what they want to be self employed in? I mean, it's a bit early, probably at fourteen and twelve, but you never know, you know. My son draws well, so right. I encourage him to consider working as a coder or a programmer. Computers. And my daughter is a fashionista. A fashion girl is she? Oh yes. Yeah. I'm not too good with the fashion. I just shove on any old shirt or jacket that I can find hanging out in the carpet <laughs> saying, could you wear me today, please, because I'm getting dusty in here. <laughs> oh, 
Well, you always look great. I just oh. wanted to call in to say hello. That's I lovely. enjoy your show. Lovely to talk to. Do you want me to say hello to your children and husband as well? What are their names? Tyler, Dommy Do, Vincent. Tyler, Dommy Do, and Vincent. I love those yes. names. Tyler, Dommy Do. That's wonderful. Dommy Do and Vincent. Hello, everyone. And thank you for um, calling thank in. Thank you. All right, my darling. Thank you so much. Cheerio care, now. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now. That was a lady from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, 6500. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Why is that song from... That wasn't Elvis, was it, singing that one? I can't remember if that Elvis was Elvis or not, really, to be honest. Anyway, there we are. Uh, let's have a look. Jane says, I've got so many friends in Florida. It looks really nice there. I think so as well. I like the lightning. They had the most amazing lightning stuff. Scary, but beautiful at the same time. You understand what I mean? I mean, it really is this line around sort of June, July, August. It's amazing. And it can be, it's so hot. And to be honest, if you're British, don't go to Florida June, July, August. Very, very hot. You step out of your hotel room and it's like walking into an oven. Within 30 seconds, you are dripping in sweat. And you can be out there, you know, everything's sunny, baking hot, and all of a sudden, this wind comes from nowhere. Like, all the trees bend over and the, it goes dark. The rain pours down. It's like someone turns on the tap. It pours down for 10 minutes. And then as quickly as it's gone, come, it goes. Right? And 10 minutes later, you would never have known it had been raining. It's bone dry again. And this happens several times a day. It is fantastic place, Florida. Fantastic. Uh, Wendy's got to go now. Goodbye, Wendy. Have a nice day, my darling. Christina, Denny's Grand Slam Breakfast. Now you're talking, but of course I'm vegetarian now, so it's some of the things I wouldn't have on there. These breakfasts are massive in the States. And the funny thing is, when you're over there, you think to yourself, you'll have a big breakfast, then you won't have to have lunch. And for some reason, that doesn't quite work out. I don't know why. Because you have your breakfast, especially if you're going to Disney or something like that. You want to be there early. So you might be having your breakfast about 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And you'll have this massive breakfast. Oh, I won't bother with lunch. About 1 o'clock, you're hungry again. I'm sorry. It doesn't work to have a large breakfast saying that you're not going to have a lunch and, and to make up for that doesn't work. Doesn't work, all right? Um, let's have a look. Good morning, Tony Power, who joins us this morning. Morning, Tony. Christina says, I sometimes miss my home state of Texas and the nice, thick steaks. Now, Christina's got the thing there. Thick steaks is what you get in the States. There's none of this minute steak stuff that you get in Sainsbury's here, like, you know, like so thick. These are all thick steaks in the States. You won't get a thin steak in the States. Them, it's food. These food mountains are massive that you get when you go out. And there's a lot of all-you-can-eat um, buffet-type meals, you know, if you like. Chi I'm not keen on Chinese food, but there's plenty of places. that uh, A lot of the Chinese places are all-you-can-eat buffets. You just go in, you pay $10, and you stuff your face. And let's be honest, girls, we love it, don't we? We love sitting there stuffing our faces for $10. And you can't go wrong. It's all like that in Vegas. Vegas is like that. Any all these hotels, you go in for the buffet dinner and, um, and help yourself. Be done with it. Breakfast as well. Oh, it's wonderful. They know how to do food in the States. A, a really good example of this is in Disney, where they have the character breakfast. The character breakfast in Disney. I'll never forget the difference because I've, I've done the one in the States and I've done the one in Euro Disney. And the one in the States, you go in and there's the piles of bacon and sausages and eggs and toast. And you go around with your plate, you help yourself, you go back again and you can help yourself like that. Euro Disney, they bring you over two skinny little bits of bacon on the plate and half a sausage. It's a massive difference the way they do food in America. It really is. 
Good morning to um, Ray, who says, Glenn Miller's Orchestra, thank you very much. Pennsylvania, 65000. What a shame, Ray, we can't play saxophone. We could have done that, couldn't we? Thank you, Glenn Miller. Thank you, uh, Dalila. Glenn Miller. Uh, Jane says, did you see the eclipse photos that NASA did? Absolutely beautiful. Are they based in Florida or am I completely wrong? In Florida, I know they've got... Oh, let me think now. In Florida, they've got a place where you can go and visit all the spaceships. And all. Uh, not, no, it's not Houston. That's in Texas. What's the place? Florida space. Hang on a minute. Let me look. Florida space. Because I've been to that space. Uh, you can go and see all old Apollo spacecraft and all that. Kennedy Space Center. There it is. Kennedy Space Center. Um... That's what it's called at Cape Canaveral. All right. John F. Kennedy Space Center. That's it. I went to that years and years ago. It's fantastic there. Fantastic. You actually get into and you can go in to where the control room was. Where all the little old and it looks really old in there. All old computer screens and everything's there. And they've got like audio playing. So it's like the real thing and everything. Oh, it's fantastic. Go, go there if you get a chance. Morning to Lyndon. Good morning, Lyndon. I'm very well tonight, Lyndon. Lyndon's on the, in New Zealand as well, aren't you, sir? Yes. Uh, Jane, we saw an eclipse here. It was 1999 we saw an eclipse here. So that's quite some time ago. And uh, everything suddenly went dark and eerie and all that. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I was just uh, going to uh, talk about the karaoke on Monday. We've had some issues with the sound at the karaoke and really quite bad distortion, actually. Um, not in the clubs, but when it comes to you on the Facebook Live thing. I've been trying to sort it out. And it was <clears throat> Ben Parker, um, who's over the years helped me immensely with uh, with my karaoke. Um, uh, of which I'm eternally grateful. But it was him who suggested some different settings on the mixer. And we do appear now to have sorted it out. What I've got to watch for, basically, is people who who can throw their voice really loudly into the mic. Because that is what causes a lot of the distortions. So, you know, if, if, if I go... Right up to the mic like that. I mean, you you can hear me much louder. Now, I'm not throwing my voice now. If I was to throw my voice really loud while it's on top of it like that, then that would distort badly too. And I've got to watch out for that. Um, otherwise, it, it, it just completely distorts. Um, but there was another issue as well. I had the bass turned too far up as well, which sounds OK in the club. But coming up to Facebook, it seemed to create a lot of distortion. So we seem now to have sorted that out. If I don't know if you want to go backwards uh, to Monday's karaoke video, which you can find on my Facebook wall. And you'll hear the sound is a lot, lot better than it was now, albeit, albeit with a little bit too much echo, I think, on Monday. We had a, the echo too far up, but we'll get it right eventually. It's all bits and pieces, OK? Uh, Tony says, I think it was originally Cape Kennedy, Chris. Uh, I think it's Canaveral now. Oh, right, OK. So did uh, the, the rockets used to go from Florida, though, didn't they? I'm sure the Apollo rockets used to take, up from, take off from Florida. Was it actually at that space centre, that visitor's visit, that rockets still go from... Oh, they don't send any rockets up now, do they? They, they don't do it anymore, do they? I suppose they, they will at some point. I hope I'm around when, when man goes to Mars. I'd like to see that. That That's an achievement, isn't it? We, well, I don't think we can really grasp the distances between here and Mars. You know, it's like months and months to get there. I get fed up when I'm driving for two hours going into London. <laughs> Let alone going to Mars in blooming, what is it, six months or something to get there? Travelling at full speed? As with no brakes, do they? You can't stop somewhere at Starbucks, can you, for a cup of tea? <laughs> Christina says Florida has a launch place. Ah, yes, JFK Space Centre, Houston has a, a HQ in its South, South Houston. Really cool centre and shuttle tour around the launch date. So that's excellent. Oh, I've got someone at the door. Oh, Christ, hang on a minute. 
Can you hang on a minute? Someone's at the door. Sorry about that, gang. There's no one else answering the door here, is that? It's me. It's a one man shong. Ding dong! That's right, Avon calling. Oh, I'm worn out. Look, a little box. Yes, um, so Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center Gate, great place to go uh, when you go. Now, you're wondering what this is. Look, this, this is a very exciting product. Very exciting. From Amazon. I told you I'd get at least one thing from Amazon each week. Oh. Oh, it's in one of those packets you can't get open in it, wasn't it? There we go. Oh, I love it. It's like Christmas every day here. I just order empty boxes sometimes, so it's like getting a gift in the post. Here we are. And that's it. You're wondering what this is now, aren't you? That That's a mount, because I've got a, a tripod downstairs. I've got two tripods. I've got one that I leave... Um, at Central Station to bring you the um, karaoke on Mondays and Fridays on the internet. I've got one here, but I didn't have an iPhone holder for it. Um, how does that blooming work then? Oh, I see, it works on a screw. So you see, you put your iPhone in there, because all, all the programs are filmed on, on iPhone. Don't need a video camera anymore. These, these phones are so good at doing the stuff, all high definition. There you go, you see, that's on there now. And that'll swing around like that and like that. Because I did try and do a cooking video on Sunday this week. And I didn't have a mount, so I got the old tripod. And it literally was held on with elastic bands, thick elastic bands, which I thought did the job. The only thing is, I couldn't see the countdown going up on the iPhone because the rubber band was covering it. Anyway, so I'm chatting away to the camera. I've done 10 video clips. Um... And I got round to putting them, it was around about 10. I got back to putting them together to make the cooking show. And I, and I realised three of them were missing. Of course, I hadn't pushed the record button. Yeah, and I couldn't see the numbers going around. I just assumed that it was happening. So with this, that won't happen again. So in future, I shall be able to do my programmes and know that I'm being recorded at the same time. Yes, I should think so as well. Uh, Jane says, I think you should have a dog so that there is a person at the door. The dog could cover you for you. Good idea, Jane. No, no more pets. <coughs> no more pets, Jane. I, I've had three cats um, uh, more recently, just about three weeks ago. Uh, my, my last one went to cat heaven. She's actually downstairs now. Um, yeah, her ashes are, are in my kitchen. They're actually positioned in a kitchen just where her bed used to be. I've put them kind of on a stall in that place at the moment and eventually she'll go to my mum's uh, uh, grave to go in there so yeah that's that's uh, no more pets absolutely no more pets oh tony wants one well you want one of these tony do you want one of these they're not very dear i think about 10 quid something like that and that you see that will screw on to the top i hope i hope it's easy as easy as it looks that should screw on to the top of the tripod like that and um then I can adjust it like that. Isn't that an exciting product? It really is. Right, let's just do... I want to show you this. Um, years ago, when I used to collect stamps, one of the things I used to collect was first day covers. I mean, they're not really worth anything. And I think when you're a child doing stamps, you don't worry about stamp hinges. You just use bits of sellotape. <laughs> you know. I mean, so as a boy, it was a nice thing to collect and that, but it's not really worth any money or anything like that. I've still got the stamp collection, so I'll bring up and show you one day. Um, and one of the other things I used to collect was first day covers. Now, I, I don't know where they are, to be honest. Again, I don't think they're worth much, but there is a new first day cover about to come out. Now, I've got a picture of it here somewhere. Is that it? There we go. That is about to come out. And you can order yours today from the Westminster Collection. And the advert says, Own the brand new Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip 
Platinum Wedding Anniversary First Day Cover. Now, a first day cover, <clears throat> these come out the day the stamp is released. So you, you you get yourself one of these stamps, you put it in the post, it gets a special stamp on it, and it's a collectible. It's a collectible. Will it be worth anything in 50 years? Probably not, you know, because there'd be thousands and millions of people buying these things. But nevertheless, something nice to have, perhaps not expensive. Uh, the story says, on the 20th of November this year, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and I know the Americans would love something like this. They they love collecting anything to do with our royals and, and, and uh, England. And uh, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, will celebrate their platinum wedding anniversary, the first royals in British history to ever do so. To mark this occasion, you now have the chance to own the brand new platinum wedding anniversary first day cover free of charge. All you pay is the postage. Your cover features the brand new official platinum wedding postage stamp, the very first to be issued to celebrate the momentous anniversary depicting Her Queen Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness Prince Philip on their wedding day in 1947, which is, of course, uh, on the stamp now. And uh, that costs you £2.50. That's all. £2.50 to own that. And, of course, you know, I mean, you could... Put it in a frame or something like that, really, couldn't you? Do what you like with it. Or you might send it to someone, perhaps as, as a little gift or something like that. But I think that's a wonderful thing to have. So I thought I'd just read that out to you and say that that's going to come available. So if you type in um, <coughs> Queen Elizabeth Platinum Wedding Anniversary First Day Cover, I'm sure you will find links to that and um, and get one for yourself, OK? And we'll do one other little bit of news today, which is very, very worrying. It's in this morning's Super Soar Away Daily Mirror. Check this out. A change may be as good as a rest, but that doesn't mean everyone's on board with it. Just a minute. You like this, didn't you? Look. Mm. <clears throat> Cast your mind back to 1999 when the outrage was so strong at Coco Pops being rebranded as Choco Krispies that Kellogg's actually put the name to a consumer vote. Now, a confectionery favourite is getting a flavour makeover. And it could divide fans. Now, get ready to be shocked and disturbed by this story, boys and girls. Jelly babies. Who hasn't had jelly babies? Come on, who hasn't had jelly babies? Oh, I can hear the liberals now. I can hear the liberals. Oh, it's really cruel for you to eat those little babies and all that. Oh, please, get off your horse. Oh, it's really offensive to babies. Shut up! Jelly Babies has been around since 1864. Of course, you remember one of the Doctor Who's, Tom Baker, had his little bag of jelly babies, didn't he? when it's believed that an Austrian confectioner who worked for Friars of Lancashire created the mould which was meant to resemble a bear, but ended up looking more like a baby. They've since come in a range of stock flavours, blackcurrant, orange, strawberry and lime. Until now. New tropical jelly babies are set to hit the shelves this month. They come in three varieties. Mango, Pineapple and banana. Is this to be more acceptable to the world? Is that what it is? <clears throat> banana is a pretty divisive one. Maynard Bassett's, who make the sweets, say it's the first time the enduringly popular sweet is getting a makeover. They say new Jelly Babies Tropical are sure to make sweet fans feel like they are only a bite away. <laughs> From the Caribbean. <laughs> Uh, the bags have recommended retail price £1.32. The launch will be backed by a £6 million advertising campaign. Of those lucky people who have already sampled the goods, opinion is already split. And there's a few different tweets there. Someone says, tropical jelly babies, fascinating idea, quite yummy. Someone else, these tropical flavoured jelly babies aren't much cop, to be honest. Texture is all wrong and banana was a bad, bad choice. So there we are. Will you be trying the new tropical jelly babies? That's the question. Jane has an excellent idea saying maybe when they come out, you could try them out here 
on United Kingdom Talk. Oh, no, Jane. No, my God, how many sins is there in a jelly baby? Let me have a look. I'll have a look for you. Sins jelly baby. Because we're on the slim as well, do you see? Got to be very, very careful. Bassett's jelly babies. Let's have a look. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Do, 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 do. One jelly baby is one sin. Oh, my God. Well, my, that, so if I was... I suppose I could have had one of each flavour and be done with it. Just, 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 just for the thing. Is it three... Is, Christina, is it, what, three sins for one jelly baby? Oh, my God, blimey. Is that right? Well, I'm not having one then. I thought it might be one each. I'm not quite sure. Someone says there. Tony says, I hate them. They stick to your teeth. A dental nightmare. Well, you're all right, Tony, aren't you? Don't you take yours out and just wash them under the tap now? Well, that's what I'd heard. Fancy leaving your teeth on the end of someone's tongue. <laughs> or worse than that. <laughs> Poor little jelly babies. We like jelly babies. We like them. All righty, we're going to wrap up now, boys and girls. I'm going to do the birthdays. Now, I've got some text birthdays that arrived this morning. Um, I'm very, <laughs> When I finish that, I'm going to rush down and try this out. I'm very excited to be trying that out. We like things coming for the post. Right, hang on a minute. Where's this text? Uh, from Adam the Plumber. Can you do me a birthday today? Jane Howard... That is Sam's daughter from the Isle of Wight. 16 today. Happy birthday, sweet 16. Tra la 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 la. Happy birthday, sweet 16. La da 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 da. Tony, perhaps you'd like me to do the vocals on one of your songs. I could see myself representing the UK at the Eurovision Song Contest. And, as I'll be the singer and the, and the person doing it, that's a, I want a dancer behind me. I want Nikki French to do the dancing behind me. You tell her that from me. When I, hope, when I represent the Eurovision, the UK for Eurovision, please can I have Nikki French as a dancer? Because I've just seen her video that she did in Sydney. On a big stage in Sydney with his, with his, with 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 the dancers in in angel wings and things like that, would she like to be one? I think she would. All right. So, oh, Jane's Jane's there. Sorry, Jane. Thank you, um, Chris and Uncle Adam. Yeah, happy birthday to Sam's daughter. Sixteen. That's a that's a that's a nice age. Sixteen. You are now a real woman. A real woman, 16 years old. Happy birthday, darling. And also, Sean Stewart is 35 today. Happy birthday, Sean Stewart. What do you do for a living, sir? We need to know these things. What do you do for a living, Sean? Okay. All right, Sam. That's all right, my darling. There we are, Jane. Ah, so that's your daughter there, is it? I get it now. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I, they're both on there, mother and daughter. That you see, it's a family program. I've told you, family program. That's what it is. Sean in a matron. <laughs> right. Should we do the other birthdays then today? Uh, other people's birthdays today. Scott Glancy, oh, my very very good friend Scott. Happy birthday to you. He's a he's a wonderful man. He used to come along to uh, all my gigs in Hammersmith, um, uh, Hammersmith Belushes, which I I just adored that gig. I really did working with Robbie and then the uh, wonderful Vicky who I worked with. Happy birthday, Scott. All right. Uh, Betsy Norris today is 67 years old. Fantastic. Happy birthday, lovely Betsy. Uh, Robert Singers is 31 years old today. Happy birthday, Robert. Elena Treble Clef Winehouse. That's a lovely name. Elena. Happy birthday, Elena. Peter McKee is 57 years old today. Happy birthday, Peter. Sullivan Patrick's birthday this morning. Uh, Colette M. Stewart is a lovely young, 54 years old today. Younger than me, my darling. Happy birthday, Colette. And, ah, Tony McFarlane Smith. What are you doing? Are you still running nightclubs? I'm not quite sure what you're doing now. I haven't heard from you for a while. But I, perhaps you'll reply to this and let me know what you're doing with your life now, OK? Happy birthday, Tony. Let's sing the song, gang. <laughs> Shall I try and get all the names in today? I will. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, Scott, Betsy, Robert, Elena, Peter, Sullivan, Colette, and Tony. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Well, I think that's about the limit of names I can get in in one go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm looking at one of these. Is one of you a porn star? I don't know how you got on my Facebook list. Hang on a minute. Let me just double check that. Or do you just look good? It's, no, I think you just look good. Fair enough. We can't have porn stars on here, dear. That's outrageous. <laughs> There you go. Ta there you go. Look, Tony. Tony writes songs for the Eurovision Song Gods. He reckons it might work. Me doing the Eurovision. <clears throat> Write me a song, Tony. Send it over and I'll, I'll, I'll sing it and send you the tape back. Tape? What's a tape? What's a tape? Anyway, that's it today, boys and girls. Um, oh, Sean's a nurse. A matron. I didn't think they had matrons anymore. Didn't that stop? Didn't they get... Oh, did they bring them back? Oh, uh, oh what's his name? Sean is an A and E nurse. Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, that's that's a that's a mad job, that isn't it? Wow, all that rushing around and and trying to fix people up and oh, it must be awful when you I say you lose people now and again. It's just 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 the just the uh, just the way of the job, really, isn't it? Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, tonight it's Wednesday night, so I'll be hosting a quiz tonight at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30. It's every Wednesday. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. Be lovely if you can join us down there uh, for tonight's quiz. A £30 bar tab is up for grabs. That always gets one. It's not like, you know, if, if, if we get to a certain score. No, that goes every week, OK? So there's a £30 bar tab up for grabs. Second prize is either a bottle of wine or six bottles of beer, one of the two. So quiz night tonight and every Wednesday I'll be hosting at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Have a nice Wednesday and thank you very, very much for joining me. Once again, it's very kind of you, those of you that uh, share the show on your walls. Thank you as well and have a nice day. See you soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye now.